you know, I've got to admit, when I first got into this atheism thing, I thought the intellectual end of it was going to require a lot more effort. I expected at some point that they'd at least give me a challenge. See, like most Americans who weren't raised with a lot of church, and I viewed Christianity as the benign ignorance that pop culture kind of sells it as, right? Like, our culture doesn't have any problem presenting that Christian lady as prudish and tyrannical. It doesn't have any problem presenting the televangelist as greedy and hypocritical. You, you actually do get some of the negatives painted into your movies and TV shows and shit like that, but the religion itself is always treated with kid gloves. So if you're not intimately familiar with it, you come away with what I consider the standard interpretation of Christianity in America. It's a moral system founded by a great moral leader that's all too often misused by greedy or unscrupulous people. But it turns out that if I'd thought Christianity was a potato, I'd have been closer to the truth. Of course, many, if not most of our listeners, grew up in religious households that dragged them to church every Sunday and maybe Wednesday. So y'all knew a lot more about this shit than me going in. But when I realized I was an atheist, and what's more, when I realized that the atheist position was one worth defending, I actually thought I'd be defending it against something that was, at its core, benign. But then I started reading the Bible. And I started reading the Christian news sites and blogs and following their YouTube channels and reading their apologetics. And holy fuck, did I have it wrong? I mean, sure, pop culture wasn't afraid to occasionally poke fun at religion, but Jesus was always treated as though he was this great moral teacher. Even secular authorities tended to grant him that. But when you look at the shit he actually says in his book, there's very little of it that one can claim as moral. I mean, sure, he utters some shit that passes ethical muster now and again, but it's certainly not his defining characteristic. He spends most of that time warning about the impending end of the world and convincing people to abandon their families. The Sermon on the Mount is 90% bullshit about how the world's going to end way before now with the occasional love people tossed in to make it seem a little more poetic. In fact, the only way you can even mistake Jesus for a moral character is by tossing him after 39 books of Old Testament rape apologetics and genocide instructions. But like most people before I read it, I expected the Bible to be a book of morality too. It seems childishly naive today, but I mean, think about what the Bible has sold to you if you're not plugged into the atheist community. Even secular authorities will tell you that it's a good book, that it represents great literature, that it has important ethical parables in it. And then you read the fucking thing and you realize that anyone who ever said that never read it. So yeah, I got into this thing with all these arguments in my head along the lines of, yes, I get that your religion teaches you a bunch of moral stuff and encourages you to be a good person, but divorcing oneself from reality and encouraging others to do the same isn't worth the ethical gains you might achieve. And I've never needed any of them because all the world's religions are fucking horrible. And strangely enough, this manages to be a bit of a disadvantage to the atheist. I mean, obviously, there are plenty of people in denial who just pretend their book doesn't say what their book says. But there are also more honest people who try to hide religion itself behind the horrors of major religion. I, I mean, I know that sounds paradoxical, but it works out fine for them. In fact, it makes them seem like the reasonable ones from time to time. The argument goes something like this. They listen to the atheist grievances about Christianity, Islam at all, and they nod along and they agree with you throughout. But rather than landing on the logical conclusion that religion itself is bad, they say that those religions are bad or more likely the modern interpretations of those religions are bad. And when there are such obvious flaws in all the major religions and all the interpretations of them, it's much easier to argue that those flaws are the real problem. They're wrong, but it's an easy thing to argue. It even like satisfies that modern desire to find a nice middle ground and chastise both sides in the argument. But there's a reason why humanity has never produced a good religion. And it's not that a few bad people keep sneaking in and hamstringing their efforts. Religion, by its very nature, demands a divorce from reality. That's what it is. That's the definition. And it really doesn't matter if you're shortcutting logic to get to a good thing. If I tell my kids the monster under his bed's going to eat him if he doesn't finish his peas, I haven't done a good thing, regardless of how healthy peas are. In fact, one cannot even theoretically create a good religion. Right. Like if you and I were tasked with writing a book that was going to later be convincingly presented to the world as the word of God, there would be no ethical way to fulfill that request. I mean, sure, we could fill it up with the most benevolent dictates we could think of. But sooner or later, those would either be perverted by less scrupulous adherence to our new faith or they'd become outdated by new technology or knowledge. You know, all those wacky Sabbath restrictions for Judaism could be traced back to logical and even beneficial roots. I, okay, not all of them, but most of them. But the restriction on shellfish kind of falls apart once we learn about allergies and shit. 
Of course, you can't revise the word of God, so what might have been crafted with only the best of intentions becomes poisonous simply by attributing it to God. And that shouldn't be a shocker, should it? Pretending that you're speaking for an all-knowing being even when you know you're not. And yet millions upon millions of people have convinced themselves that the real problem is that nobody's lied well enough yet.